Hey there, Sharon Reynolds. We are welcome to day 2170 of What You Have to Now, documenting the journey. Originally, as I came online, of course, 2170, probably under 75 days ago, but uh, a long time ago at this point. And just keeping track of what I'm doing, what's working, what's not, sharing lessons learned, sharing big blunders, as well as things that have worked out really, really well for me. Keeping in mind that what worked for me or didn't work for me may or may not work for you. We each have to figure out what is right for us because all of our journeys are different. So today I created a couple of pieces of content. We're doing the Let's Grow annual challenge this year. We're doing one thing every day to grow and become the best possible version of ourselves or to grow in whatever way that we want to grow this year. And we're just doing some foundational things this month. And then we'll probably, like I have in the last two challenges, follow my nine part life framework, the life framework that I use to set goals, manage my life, kind of take some of the chaos out of it and try to add a little bit of structure into what is otherwise a chaotic, crazy world. And being an election year in USA, I guarantee it's going to be another crazy year this year. Uh, not sure it can be as bizarre as the last one, but it's bound to be interesting to say the least. So today and for the first 20 days of this year, I'm sharing different top growth and supersizing business strategies in the Supersize Your Business group. I had been doing, geez, idioms for five years, got a little bit over it. And so I just wanted to do something different. So we're starting off this year doing something a little bit different. And I said, okay, well, what are the top 20 strategies that I know of that I've used that other people have used to grow and build and supersize their businesses, to scale and grow and create the businesses, whatever size you want. I mean, again, just like we all have our own journey, we have our own business journey. We decide what kind of career or life or business we want to create for ourselves. And then we go about creating that. It'll be different for each and every one of us and our path will be different. So I didn't want to just say, okay, here's the top five strategies because there's a whole lot more than five ways to get to where you want to be. So today we talked about actually the fifth strategy and they're not in any particular order. It's just a brainstormed list I threw together. And then I thought, okay, well, this could be super duper complicated because some of these, so for example, our second digital, our second strategy I talked about this year was digital marketing optimization. Okay. That could be, I've been studying that since I came online in 2017 and learning about that. And I still wouldn't even consider myself a novice in digital marketing optimization. So how do we take a strategy that can be huge and break it down into four simple steps that if we apply those, we can test and tweak initially and find out if it's a strategy we want to incorporate in our business, if we want to do more with it. So today we talked about innovative offerings. I like this strategy and I realized when I was done talking, I didn't give any examples. I didn't share any of my stories. I didn't give any examples of it. And I kind of hit myself in the head like I do at the end of every video and saying, oh, you forgot to say this. But the point is, I like this one because I, I personally, one of my core values is creativity and innovation and continuous improvement. So to me, this is a strategy that is near and dear to my heart. And so I just shared the four simple steps to creating that and implementing that strategy or testing it, right? We can take anything in the universe and break it down to a simple three to five step process, right? Anything we want, getting anything we want. You can do a three step process, a five step process. Um, I, this always reminds me of, um, oh my gosh, I can't remember his name, Jack Canfield's book about success. You know, you got Tony Robbins book about success. It's like a thousand pages. It's not really a thousand, but it's a big, thick book. Right. And then you've got, uh, it broken down into simple steps. How do you just apply these simple steps? And it's usually a handful of steps. It depends on the, the leader or the guru or the master or the coach, but Jack Canfield's got like 33 or something. And I'm like, if I'm going to apply something and implement something, do I want 33 steps or do I want five simple steps? I want five steps and I want to make those steps my own. But that's me. Obviously, millions of people like 33 steps because I think that that, that book by Jack has gone on to sell millions of copies, um, just like every other success book, right? But you'll notice if you read a whole bunch of other people's stories and other people's successes, everybody's got a different journey. Even when we, and I do this as well, teach what's worked for us, it doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody that we share it with or that we teach it to, right? And that has to do with them, not with us, not with the process, not with the framework, not with the system. All different systems work. It's whether that's the right system for you or not. So talked about that today. Our topic for the Grow Challenge, our 
Let's Grow Annual Challenge is grow beliefs today. And we are just paying attention to and writing down the beliefs that we have about growing and growth and our ability to grow, other people's ability to grow, just overall beliefs. We want to brainstorm a list of at least 10 or capture at least 10 of those that we've got. And we want to look at that list at the end of the day and say, okay, yeah, I used to believe I wasn't good enough and that I didn't deserve to create the life that I wanted. But I don't believe that anymore because it's not true for me or for anyone else. Uh, and then we want to look at those and question those beliefs and say, is it still true for me now? And maybe it is true for me right now, but do I want it to be? And I think that's even the more important question is, yep, it, it might be what I'm experiencing right now based on my past thoughts, past beliefs, past feelings, past experiences. But do I want to carry that with me going forward? Because we can decide to change any belief we've got right now. You might have a religious or a political belief, and you can change that at any instant. There's nothing stopping you from doing that, but only you can choose to change that or not. Mm -hmm.